Hey, how's it going, guys? Tonight we're hanging out at the Grand Floridian, and we are super excited to say that we're going to be dining at Victoria and Albert's tonight. So it's been closed down since the pandemic, and it actually just reopened back up back in July. They rethemed it while it was closed, and they revamped the menu and everything. So this is going to be the first time for my wife dining here. This will be a second time for me. We're super excited to, to get back in here. It is like a once in a lifetime experience. Very hard reservation to get to. Um, we're just hanging out, waiting for our table to be ready. And we're so excited to share this with you guys and show you the whole experience. Okay, so we just got to our table. This is the Queen Victoria room. It's like a four table room, very small, intimate, really nice. Um, and we started with a zero proof cocktail. It's really good. So she did just bring us the drink menu, which I'll show you here now. That's all the drinks. Okay, so just a note, we are in the Queen Victoria room, like I mentioned, and that comes with the gold mess, which is a 10 course um, food pairing. So that is only in this room and the chef's table, whereas in the dining room, you will get the silver, which is a seven course. So I'm going to show you this really cool mess. <laughs> and the 10 course is going to be a 375 per person um, an available $200 wine pairing or $110 zero proof pairing I believe the 7 course in the dining room is going to be $295 and $150 wine pairing with that so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so drinks are out. Um, I ended up going with the maple bacon Manhattan, and Aaron got the Cosmo. The, the Cosmo. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a look at mine here. This is the maple bacon Manhattan. So it, it comes with rye, um, obviously the candied bacon. And then they do give you a side of port. She poured just a little bit over the top of it. And she said you could pour more for flavor. Um, and then Erin got the... It's the Cosmopolitan 24. Um, and it comes with a little sugar cube in there. They poured it for that. Um, it's house made for us too. Oh, dry it. It's really good. Yeah. It's stronger than I usually feel like I use it often, but in a different way. It's unique, but it's good. Like James Bond in this. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That's actually really tasty. You can taste a little bit of the like nuttiness of the port, um, but a lot of nuts. So obviously, the pie in there. Um, I'll probably add just a dash dash more of that but I do like it a lot because what's cool about it is you can just kind of customize it exactly how you want so our first course or tasting is out um you know, look at these that is just look at that it's like art it's crazy Beautiful. so here we're gonna have first one is gonna be a pink pineapple from Costa Rica um Middle is a Thai basil spice mango langoustine tartlet. Uh, I believe it's topped with jalapeno. And then, um, I don't know how the Cobert, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but <laughs> it's like a Spanish five star ham over a, a um, like a caramel eclair. It's really, really good. So let me look at all of those. I don't know like what to 
It's just good. <laughs> pineapple. It's like a pineapple. There's a little, a little bit of, little bit of onion on there too. Like a crunch. Or a shallot maybe. Now we're gonna go for the the middle one here. Let's see. Get the jalapeno flavor, but not the heat, which is nice. I have the Kobe and the player one. I'm just gonna take one bite of this. Oh my god. <laughs> good. That one is my part of the best. This is the chickpea one. So, so they will accommodate for any kind of dietary restrictions or preferences. Like they adjusted her menu to be full pescatarian. So they sub the meats with like fishes or you could do plant-based. You could do pretty much anything. You just have to reach out to them in advance and they will check with you. So we're on our first amuse-bouche for us here. And we got the little mother of pearl spoons in, which means caviar. Um, I've actually never had caviar and neither is she. <laughs> so. I, I like literally pretty much everything. Uh, we'll give you a look at it. It's a it's a caviar over a cauliflower puree panna cotta with a squid ink twill on top, and it looks absolutely stunning. Is it? It's like. Salty, but not like salty. There's no weird texture. It's like, I don't know, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the panna cotta. It's delicious. It's like a. It, it definitely has that like heavy flavor. Like you have to like, you like think like sushi. You know? It's got a full bite. It's like the real caviar. <laughs> so, um, light, but airy, sweet, salty, um, everything. It's, it's great. Okay, second course is out, <laughs> or third technically. Um, this is a yellowtail sashimi, essentially, um, for like a carrot puree, some potato, um, Riesling. And a tomatillo and a melon. You like it? I know you're not a. She's not a very big raw fish fan, but. but no, it's really good. It's yeah. fresh. Carrot puree. It, it all just ties together perfectly. So this Here's is. Your Dover sauce. Yeah. That's the Dover Sword. The Pier of an Arrow is named after the attire a, that they wore in Spain. The Spanish military one? police wear a very bright red jacket. It is, okay. It is like cool. super red. It sure. is yeah. bright red. And that's Good. how this particular seafood got its name after the royalty wow. military police. Very that's cool. Great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it looks delicious. So that was cool. She explained that. It's awesome. So yeah, this is gonna be, like you said, the Dover Sole. Um, we have some leek base, um, the Dover Sole buttercream on the bottom here that they poured over. And then it is shaved fennel. And um, it looks absolutely delicious. I love Dover Sole. Yeah, try this out. It's really similar to shrimp. And it has yours has the same topping to base, right? Yep. So they just switched the protein. Buttery, flaky. Um, everything you want out of fish. Yeah, I like this one a lot too. Yeah. I still think the caviar takes it for me. So yeah, caviar is good, but so in between course, uh, I completely forgot what they said this was. I think it was a. It's kind of like Danish. It's it smells delicious. It's like a buttery, like almost like a croissant with a, um, a spread there. So she's gonna head, go ahead and try that. Looks delicious. Yeah. 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 Ye
What is it? <laughs> Don't even know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, so, how about our next course? This is going to be a Glacier 51 toothfish. Um, Get a lot of woodsiness, like the type of mushrooms in there. Um, and like a little bit of bitter from the diagon. Um, the fish itself is delicious, and I love this glaze on top. I don't know exactly what that is, but this is, this is a really, really good one. It's the smokiness and the woodsiness. Goes really good with the, the Manhattan. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's like a very Asian inspired, but like, and I mean, obviously, if you see the chopsticks, <laughs> but uh, no, this one is super good. There's a little ginger in there. This is another winner for me. One of our new chefs, Chef Gabby, is from Norway. Her neighbor next door was an Indian girl who their family would invite her over to cook family meals, and her father insisted that all the kids come in the kitchen and cook with the family. So that really enlivened or started her love for culinary passion. So this is actually a carrot tea masala. We've taken the carrots, we've braised them in coconut milk and tikka spice. You have crispy carrots on top with beautiful dragon carrots. You have three different sauces. You have a apricot yogurt, which is like a vegan yogurt. You have classic carrot puree and a beautiful tikka spice. Then the bread on the side is going to be a puri puri spice bread. So the bread is spiced with a little bit of fennel as well as coffee. And then this is carrot tops, a little bit of finger limes as well as mint and cilantro. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This is <laughs> Rohan Duck. Rohan Duck is coming to us from upstate New York. It's Excited for this one. <laughs> a, Pan Perdue, which is almost in the style of French toast with a fig baked in, dotted with balsamic vinegar. We've topped this with a root beer leaf with a duck confit inside oh, wow. with Indian long pepper as well as cardamom. We top this with a duck skin tuile. You'll also find a fig puree with black mason figs from California as well as a parsnip puree and a little bit of a duck shoe. Wow. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, you guys heard uh, heard all that. She was nice enough to let us film that. She was really great about that, actually. Well, that's, like, awesome that it's, like, carrot, but it's, like, good, you know? So this might be what I was most excited for tonight, was the duck. Jeez. <laughs> oh, cow. The, um, this might be the best balsamic I've ever had. It's a perfect balance. Like it's sweet, um, but like so subtle, it doesn't overpower it. I'm gonna guess the best this year tonight for me. This is out of the park. Succulent, delicious ducks. Um, that little thing of uh, balsamic, it just, it's its perfect. That is going to be the lamb. Um, so this has a crispy kale, um, height of the season blueberries, um, stone ground mustard, blueberry puree, as well as uh, a lamb jus. To finish and pickled blueberries. Yeah. Pickled blueberries. There you go. Thank you. Oh, that's it's just so tender. Like probably could have cut all my fork. The kale. It's not right. <laughs> that is delicious. Not typically a huge lamb. Like I don't gravitate towards lamb, but this is fantastic. It is so it's cooked perfectly. Tender, juicy, a ton of flavor in here. Delicious. And <clears throat> she actually got, again, the pescatarian version. So this is a king salmon, and then all the same um, accompaniments on there. But instead of the jus, it was a blueberry puree finish.
the salmon looks like it was cooked like to perfection, as it should be. <laughs> right, the blueberry is good. It's like a blueberry pie. It's like that warm. It's so good. Yes, it's delicious. This is again. I keep saying, on this is my favorite one. This is one of my favorites as well. These parts are so just good. Everything is spot on. It is just like I remember here. It is to perfection. It is so, so good. Miyazaki is known for its snowflake like marbling. On the right hand side, we accompany both items with a Swiss potato roasty. Wow. That's pan seared in a little bit of the Wagyu drippings. We top this with Calvin pea tendrils as well as Juni Nardello peppers. We finish it with a little red pepper jus. Wow. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. So that is going to be her dull bristle, of course. And the same accompaniments that you heard her say about mine for the A5 Japanese Wagyu. I'm pumped for this. Look at that cook on that, too. That is just insane. Just butter. Butter meat. <laughs> You've had so when I had it at Bull and Bear, right? Yeah, I think so. But okay. that's the only time? Yeah, I've never ordered it. I think I've just had like a bite of it. It's really good. It's good, right? Like the the way they prepare it in like the chunk like that instead of the thin filet, I, I actually prefer it. I was gonna say, it feels like meatier than I usually like fish. Like, yeah. Not as flaky. But in this case, I don't mind that at all. Yeah. It's, delicious and makes sense with the sauce overall. Try the potato, what you say it was, with the red pepper and... <laughs> it's like an elevated hash brown. It's so good. Try the eight by the way. Well, see what Almost? Yeah. You can literally cut it with a fork. I just wanted to see if you can. Look at that. I mean, like, 90% there. Like, barely need the knife. It literally, like, say, had, like, where you say melts in your mouth, see? Like, without even chewing it, it almost starts to dissolve in, in your mouth. That is amazing. The marblings, uh, the flavor in there, and it's just... I think this is the best piece of steak I've ever had. Everything is like, like little hints of flavor. It's not like anything on this, any of these dishes like so overpowers anything else. Look over my hash brown. <laughs> wow. Say it again, this is the best course. The next best course <laughs> than the, the previous best course. You get the silverware, stands. I like these knives, it, it's, I don't know if I'll actually pick it up on here, but, go well. It's like floral design pattern on the fork. It's it, just all the little details here, it's, it's insane. It kind of cleared out here too, which is nice. So we're nearing the end here. We have our fromage plate here now. This is a zero waste, they said, um, cheese plate so the top it's gonna be a brie cheese with a little microgreen on top um and was the uh, uh honeysuckle. yeah this was like an agave nectar i believe um and then it's pears three ways so it's a uh, plums plums sorry so it's plums three ways um it was a this one was a pickle this is a fresh, and I believe that's a, I forget what fermented? the- Fermented? Fermented, yeah. Fermented plum there. And it's over a soil, which is a, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Yeah, you should be able to see that. It, that's a dehydrated calamari olive. So you get a little saltiness in there, and just the presentation is so nice. Thank there's you. Her, uh, there's her espresso martini. <laughs> It's perfect. It does. Just how I like Picture it. Picture perfect. <laughs> yeah, we we both are very picky with our espresso martinis. Like, it needs to be that color, like literally espresso with a little head of um, the froth. This one was the fermented one. It's almost like a jam at this point. I don't know if you can see that. 
wow. It's like ice cold. Oh, so refreshing. It's like a jam. Yeah, like a jam is the best way I can describe it. Like something go flying in the uh, Alright, let's try it. And this was the. Uh, agave. The agave in that drink. Oh. With honey, I think. Okay. <laughs> Delicious. And I do not, but if you have fillings or something, <laughs> be careful on this one. It's like rock candy and it's stuck in your teeth immediately. So probably I almost couldn't even like undo my <laughs> I shall <don't> like that. <laughs> that's, that's a little weird. Anyway. Let's move on to the breeze. This breeze just looks so creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only like 20 minutes from the house, so we'll go there and watch it. Delicious. That's, I would just spoon that down all day. Wow. It's been a very long time since I've had a plum. Yeah, me too. <laughs> since I was a kid, I feel like. Just really good. The breeze, the winter, sure. Oh, yeah. The like best breeze I've ever had, probably. Wow. So let's see. Let's let's try the agave nectar. Look how. I I honestly just maybe take a bite of it. Um, it's it's just dangerous. Like if you chew on your arm, it literally gets stuck. It's like it's good. Like it tastes really good. I'm just sucking on it because I don't want it. I do have balance. So. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, I'm telling you. So it did it. It dissolved out of my tooth or teeth rather very quickly but when i chopped down i almost couldn't get my mouth back up i was like what's going on yeah it's really good though. yeah okay so we are rounding out we're on to one of the dessert courses here this is gonna be an elderflower ice cream with a i believe raspberry sorbet topping um and a little bit of crumble on top Look at that. It's like sweet, refreshing, with a little crunch. Give me a nice little close up of that. All right. So fresh. The raspberry glaze is just super fresh. Wow. Why is it more like a like a sorbet than an ice cream. So we're not fully done yet, but we have the whole Queen Victoria room to ourselves at this point. It's 11 o'clock. Our, our dining was at 7.30. And I gotta say the reefer is just, I, I've never eaten in this room before, but it is stunning. It really, like they did such a good job. They modernized it a little bit. It's just, it's beautiful. So this is a, said it's a chocolate sourdough base sourdough base chocolate cookie with a chocolate ganache center look at that all right it's technically what we call pop tart pop tart yeah <laughs> it's the same like recipe semi sweet the greenness in the center yeah there you go pop tart dessert Gourmet pop tarts. That's it's crazy. It's a dark chocolate cake layered with crispy rice pearls, layered with a milk chocolate mousse, a golden chocolate custard, Greek yogurt panna cotta, and then Ooh. finished with a vanilla bean buttermilk custard in the center. Wow. And then on the right hand side, we did a Grammarie and Champagne Savoyant. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. This is one I, like, I don't want to eat because it's so pretty. Like, I don't want to cut it and break it, but uh, it looks it looks great. It, like, the attention and detail in all these dishes, like, it just, it really shows. It's like a bunch of different kinds of chocolates, but different textures, too. So it's like a mousse, but then also, like, hard chocolate, like a shell. It's too sophisticated for me to even describe it. <laughs> yeah, <delicious. laughs> I was gonna say secretly, yeah. just try to cut as evenly down the center as possible because then you'll be able to see the layers as it like splits. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
See, she knows what she's doing. Look at that. Look at those layers. That is, that's something else. Like you said, a lot of different chocolate. Um, best way I would put it, like a rich assortment of ganaches, like cold, different textures of ganaches. Um, yeah, rich, all, all chocolate, um, but delicious. And there is a little bit of crunchy in there at, at the center, I think. Okay, so it's bittersweet, but time has come. It is the last course, the last dessert course. Um, but you have to see this thing. Look at this. So the first one we have here, um, these are a caramel dessert. Um, it's a mango banana inspired caramel. Um, and what's really cool about these is the wrapper is actually fully edible. So she said you can just pop the whole thing in your mouth and the wrapper is edible. It'll dissolve and you can eat the whole thing. Not the glass beads, <laughs> uh, but the whole caramel. Then it is a pistachio, um, marzipan, and I believe shortbread flavor cookie. Then you have a chocolate bonbon in here. And then finally, you have, these were the strawberry or blackberry pavlovas. Eating paper, that's so weird. And then it instantly just becomes like sugary and dissolves. It's really cool. It's delicious. I mean, if you like really like caramel, you would love this. And it has that fruity flavor that they were discussing. Like it's mango papaya, um, banana. banana. I think they said yeah, that it, it was, was mango banana, banana, banana caramel. You can like taste the fruit, but it's a caramel. Okay, so <clears throat> we are officially done with our thin courses at Victoria and Albert's. Um, I gotta say, one of the best dining experiences of my life. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was incredible. I feel like it's, like you said, like a once in a lifetime kind of thing where the fact that each course was just so thought out and especially like I'm a pescatarian, they changed the entire menu to fit my dietary restrictions. But like, I didn't feel like I suffered at all. Like they, took the courses that they planned to serve but just changed them around to fit my needs which is incredible um obviously it's extremely expensive but you're getting what you pay for like it's it's such a high-end high-class experience and if you're able to i recommend everyone come and experience this at least once in your life yeah so the attention to detail is above anything i've experienced um so we had Christina and Sharon tonight, we be honest, they were absolutely fantastic. Both amazing, such nice people. Um, just can't say enough good things about them. The food, the presentation, the ambiance, it's just the whole thing in here is, it was, it was amazing. Overall, I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I mean, it was, Every course was just so well thought out, so pretty, delicious, just the whole thing, um, amazing. Really just kind of blown away. <laughs> we had a 7.30 dining. It's now, geez, it's now 12, 12.05. So it is a long experience uh, and it's a lot of food, so plan for that. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for our experience at Victoria and Albert's tonight. It is now almost 12.30. <laughs> um, so again, keep that in mind. It's a long experience in the best way though. Yeah, um, I didn't want it to end. The, the wait staff, they were like, they were the dream team. They were, they were so, so good. They took pictures for us. Um, we just had like good conversation, conversation with, with them. them, recommendations, it like, they just were phenomenal. I, I can't say enough good stuff about both of them. Um, but no, the whole experience was, it's better than I ever remember it being. Um, it just, the food was fantastic. The presentation was fantastic. 
um, the the service. I will say pre revive or pre like um, refurb of the restaurant, it was like obviously going for the Victorian style, a little like stuffier for my taste. Now I absolutely love it. A little bit more modern spin on it, but still kept that Victorian feel. So I really like that a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, you can just tell and they talk about it and it shows that they put so much effort into each course and everything's methodically thought yeah. out. Um, they don't like spare any, you know, it's all the frills, everything possible, which is such a good thing. They even said, like talking about my dietary restrictions, I'm a pescatarian, I don't eat like beef or chicken, or any kind of meat. They were saying that they like that and the chefs like encourage it yeah. because it's a challenge for them. Yeah. So like, and they, they make me believe it. It's not annoying. Actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, like go out of their way to, if I don't like a certain vegetable, I should tell them because, you know, they'll go out of their way to make sure that what I want is exactly what I'm going to get. So. Yeah. Just for those of you who don't know, Victorian Alberts, it is in the Grand Floridian Hotel, um, a resort. It is, there's three uh there's three dining room choices there's the main dining room uh which does have the heart player in it which you can hear and see from certain seats in the victoria the queen victoria room um but that room is a seven course uh prefix menu for 295 a person which you can upgrade to the gold menu which is the queen victoria room which would be a 10 course for um i believe that was 379 a person um, and then again, the wine pairing for 200 in the Queen Victoria room, 150 in the dining room. And then the chef's table, you're getting the same experience, same menu as the Queen Victoria room, but it is that uh, chef table experience. Uh, Queen Victoria room is only four, four tables and four parties per night. And the chef's table is one per night, a limit of six people. So it's really an intimate... Um, it is just such a nice experience. Uh, definitely, if it's something you can afford for a very, very special occasion or whatever the case may be, I highly recommend it. Uh, I just, I don't have enough good things to say about it. So I think that's going to do it for tonight. We are, <laughs> we're tired, we're full, we're, we're satisfied. Um, but if you like this, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're so excited to make this one. This was a lot of fun for us. And the experience, like, we're just so grateful that we were able to even do this. Um, it's, and I'm glad I got to share it with you guys. So, again, please like the video. And um, until next time, have a good night, guys.